What's up guys? We're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. James Shoe. Dot com and I have been anticipating this date for a very, very long time. We're here for the premiere of Furious 7. Yes. Uh, a lot has been talked about this movie. It's pretty much have been in serious hype. Not only is this franchise very, very popular, Unfortunately, there was a tragic accident that happened some time ago that ended up uh, taking life of one of the main stars, Paul Walker. So that kind of totally revamped everyone who's been a part of this movie or watched this movie and is probably going to uh, help push this movie to reach over a billion dollars, I'm sure. 100%, I don't doubt at all this is going to do it. You know, and then if we could go down to memory, memory lane, yeah. we started out this franchise with The Fast and The Furious. Yeah. And that was when we first met Dom Toretto and Brian O'Connor. And for me and my boy Kent, who's doing the vid video and for all of our videos, <clears throat> it means a lot to us because when we were, I'm assuming, 18, 19 years old, it, it, that was the coolest thing is going to illegals and uh, having a souped up car and a Honda and putting <coughs> an exhaust on your car that doesn't even make it go faster but makes your car 10 times louder. And then this movie came out <clears throat> and everybody, you know, in Vegas anyways, we were like absolutely just like, this is the it movie. This is the awesomest thing in it. It didn't let us down. Cheesy, but it didn't let us down. And then Too Fast, Too Furious. Uh, Vin Diesel got an ego, and that's all we can say about that. Yeah. He got an ego and says, I can do better because he could do uh, <clears throat> the thing he owns now, um, Riddick. Yeah. So then he, uh, Paul Walker and then Tyrese did Too Fast, Too Furious. And again, loved it. And then the Paul Walker decided too, you know, maybe I don't need this franchise either. And then they did uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. And that's where we met Han for the first time. And then the writers killed him not knowing that, um, dude, this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a character that people are going to love. So they killed him. They didn't know where that was going to go. And then maybe we we're going to leave off with this guy. And then we had Vin Diesel come at the very end and everyone crazy again. And then we went back into the timeline and then we did the uh, Fast and Furious. <clears throat> and at this point, I'm absolutely falling in love with Jordan, Jordana Brewster. I'm loving her. And then we had Fast Five, and that one freaking blew off everything. And it just said, this franchise is absolutely haywire. I love it. And then Fast Six, we're introducing The Rock at this point. <coughs> Rock is completely crazy. He's at the pinnacle of his career, at the height of his career. Uh, career. Everyone loves him. And at this point, everyone loves Paul Walker. Everyone loves Vin Diesel. Everyone loves the cast. And everyone just loves him, man. I'm jacked up. <clears throat> and Rock was in five, though, right? <coughs> That's five. Yeah, okay. Because I just wanted to make sure. Because I honestly I never really cough. started caring for this movie oh. until the fifth film, mm -mm. Uh, when The Rock was introduced. I'm going to be honest. Like, I, 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 And you know what? It's not that I hate these movies, but these movies are very popular franchise. I will not argue that. But quality-wise, like I have never and probably will never go back and visit the original or the second watch one. Watch it all the especially time. Especially not Tokyo Drift. Uh, but five and six, you know, if they're on, maybe I'll watch them and such. Uh, but you know, this movie has a lot of emotion going into it. Oh my gosh, um, family. A, a family, like, you know, every Fast and Furious movie ends. And then um, there's been a huge thing now where Vin Diesel has openly come out and said, this movie should win. Best picture at the Oscars, if the Oscars news were relevant. And that to me just makes me even more terrified because I think if anyone is trouble for this franchise, it is exactly Vin Diesel. Um, so, Paul Walker, I am excited to see. The Rock, I am excited to see. I'm a big Jason Statham fan. I, uh, last time we saw The Expendables 3, was it? <laughs> I, you know, we <coughs> talked about that I'm very disappointed that Jason Statham isn't doing more newer stuff, but he's stuck in this old guy. Let's, like, remember the day when we were good. And he should be and in a really great the old one. And he's not, and he's, he is, he is definitely <coughs> had the potential and kind of still is going back to it being our modern action day star, even though I think Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, has kind of taken that uh, lead and become our main action star. Man, I'll tell you one thing though, and I hate to go back on this, but when Paul Walker passed on, I remember exactly I was in Las Vegas. <clears throat> I was at a place called Yossi Vapor Boutique my, that my friend owns, and his wife, Teresa, was like, Paul Walker just died. And then we went on TMZ. And I remember, and to every celebrity that's ever died, for me anyways, on my timeline, probably because of most of my friends are my age, that thing was trending on Facebook for like a month. Non-stop, just Paul Walker, Paul Walker, Paul Walker. And then my girlfriend and I, we drove out to the site um, that he had gotten the car accident and we stayed there for an hour and we just, man, I just, I love Paul Walker, man. Yeah. I'm like so sad to come into this movie tonight. There's, and I think a lot of emotion, <coughs> Especially a lot of diehard fans like that are going to make this movie a lot more. I know that from what I've heard so far, the movie is very more heavily emotional based. Um, 
But you know what? I'd have to say for the first time, I'm probably excited to go see a Fast and Furious movie. I've always been excited for the past six. And I'm jacked up for this one and then... The um, two hour and a half Furious 7. From what I'm hearing too, the ending is just going to be a perfect sign off to Paul Walker. We're going to see how that comes along, but... Uh, and on a technical side, not to take anything away, I am very interested in th to see how they, uh, uh, his brothers and they put the, they mask the face over Paul, uh, his brothers put for Paul Walker's face. I am very curious to see how that looks. Um, and, James Wan. And I am very excited to see how James Wan's about to go from literally a horror, to a couple million dollar budget film to doing a what, two hundred dollar marketing budget, high end, top of the top film uh, that a lot of people, as you mentioned earlier, are saying that this is going to be the first billion dollar. Fast and Furious film. I'm excited. We're gonna go in Furious 7. Alright, let's do it. Alright, we'll be back in two and a half hours. Alright guys, so we just got out of Furious 7, Chasing Cinema. I'm gonna go first in yes. our tradition of ChasingCinema.com. <clears throat> One, man, what a, what a perfect, perfect ending for Paul Walker. I loved it. <clears throat> I don't want to give spoilers away, but when you watch even if you don't like Fast and the Furious, I think when you see that what Universal's put together so so gracefully, I guess I, I guess I'll say, and with the cast looking at Paul Walker in this the final I guess two minutes of the movie, for me, man, I, I don't want to get all emotional, sappy, and all dumb on everyone, but that's like, the point, man. That's what movie like do. Like for me, that <clears throat> I was so sad to see Paul Walker and to see him like that. I'm like getting teary eyed even talking. I don't know if you can even hear it, like. What a perfect ending! I, I I loved it. The just the way that the way that they you know because he's with Jordana Brewster and his uh, child uh, Jack Jack mm -hmm. Jack and uh, dude I'm like getting emotional all retarded on you guys. <clears throat> I don't know, it just it, it was so good. And then the final scene where him and Vin Diesel are driving off like that, and then it goes off. And then I hated it even more because they split the road. And then for me I was just like ah. And they, it went up to the sky, and then it shows the retrospect of Paul Walker and where he's come from. Perfect, perfect ending for Fast and Furious for this this particular saga, this particular chapter. By no means <coughs> do I think this uh, franchise is over, <coughs> because if this makes the money that I think everyone knows it's going to make, it's uh, it's just going to continue. But on the story, on the movie itself. Perfect Fast and the Furious film. If you like Fast and the Furious, they took Fast and the Furious and they made it square. They took it to a, a whole nother level. The ridiculousness of, you know, in the past one, Fast and Furious 6, where Vin Diesel catches Michelle Rodriguez mid-air, they take this 10 times that. So if, if you like Fast and the Furious, I know you're gonna love this film. Uh, and if you love Fast and Furious, the send-off for Paul Walker is awesome. Uh, James Wan, though, I do wanna say this. I really liked how, <clears throat> Um, if if there was a scene where someone fell down, he made the camera fall over too. Uh, and he does that periodically throughout the film. And then I liked how we had uh, Thor's wife in the movie. Do you know her real name? No. Thor's wife is in the movie. She was cool. Um, and then The Rock. I mean, what can you say about The Rock other than he was The Rock? The Rock was the man. Literally throwing a rock bottom. The man. Rock and then on that, scene, uh, on that sign, and the, on that uh, scene too, when uh, James Wan the does the yeah. does that camera thing that uh, I don't know if you've seen it before. I'm sure you'll share with us, but that's not something that I'm used to seeing. So I really like what James Wan did. Um, You're forgetting me. Well, I'm you said sad, the rock. Bro. The rock was awesome. Let's uh, talk about Ronda Rousey. Yeah. <clears throat> Ronda Rousey, bro. All you can say yeah. to me, Bamfi. She's awesome, dude. I loved it, you know? She's she's not an actress, she's not gonna win an Oscar probably ever. But that's not she did her her role she did, she did it beautifully. Now Michelle Rodriguez <coughs> threw down shop, loved it. Paul Walker again, man, God bless his soul. Um, I uh, you can see this one part probably twenty-five minutes in the film where he's talking with Jordana, um, uh, and you can see how it wasn't him and they kept on switching the angles of the face and stuff like that and <coughs> that this movie man to me it just it, it means so much to me. I, I I don't know. I mean, I can't even think of anything. Dude, Chase, and take it down. I loved it. I loved it. Honestly, so, I loved it. We just got the Avengers Age of Ultron, and what I have to say about it is... Oh, I'm sorry. We, we did not get out of the Avengers Age of Ultron, even though this movie basically turned into a superhero flick. Vin Diesel has the ability to spread an earthquake with the stomp of a foot. We have people flying in cars. We have parachuting out of cars. We're flying through buildings midair. This is nothing short of a superhero movie with the crew from Fast and the Furious. Um, this, as you said, taking the movie to the ridiculous level that it has, is a beneficial thing and then at the same time kind of something that you'd strike down for. I think that 
This movie to me was too ridiculous. My suspension of belief did not buy it and a half of what was going on in this movie. <coughs> the number of, I mean, hey, you know, like I said, you have this guy, Vin Diesel cracking open earthquakes with his foot. You have cars flying through buildings. But the number one thing that I really just could not get over is the fact that Michelle Rodriguez was able to stand toe to toe with the UFC women's champion, Ronda Rousey. I don't buy that one bit. 16 seconds. <laughs> 16 seconds, exactly. Um, no. I really have been hearing great things. A lot of uh, fellow critics that have seen this movie that I respect uh, really enjoyed this movie as well. But however, to me, it just did not connect. It's not, it does not work for me. Now, I will have to say that, I mean, no matter who you are, the ending of this film is emotional. It is sad. No matter who you uh, are. No matter who you are. Uh, you know, and it did, you know, I did get emotional. It was a very beautiful moment. That I thought beautiful. the actual, how they ended it, the, the, the race, and like you said, going a different way, oh, was a very nice touch. I, I hated it. But I, I, I mean, it. honestly, to go through two hours and 30 minutes just to get to that two minutes, I would have rather liked to just see a short. Um, I would say the movie's biggest weakness is actually Paul Walker's bro, Vin Diesel. I thought he was awful in this movie. Um, I don't know if he has a writer or who writes for him, but that quickly, Quickly needs to change, especially if there's gonna be more Fast and Furious movies, because the things he says and with that little guzzle, with the, with the gruzzle, whatever kind of voice that he has, I could not stand it in this movie. However, I think that um, overall, you could not ignore the emotion in the theater. You could not ignore the feeling that you're kind of watching this man. Uh, and the moments with him, they are very. Uh, Glamour, I, mean, uh, I don't know if glamorize is the right word, but there are very uh, kind of powerful just watching him. And the the, the close-ups with him are pretty heavy, but um, even with that emotion, that doesn't really kind of show up to the end. I think the only thing I really enjoyed with this film was The Rock and Jason, Jason Statham. Oh, I didn't even mention this, please. It's okay, sorry. Um, I think that their action sequences are great. Uh, I like the battle between them, uh, but see, instead the movie wants to put Vin Diesel obviously in the main spot, and to me, that's when the movie starts falling apart. Um, yeah, you know, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't the worst one I've seen, but it was very clumsy, it was very uh, unrealistic, it's just something I just couldn't get into. If I didn't get really into the first, I honestly would say that I'd prefer five or six over this film, just because I think they're a little bit more down to earth. I mean, like you even said, when Vin Diesel jumps the highway, and grabs Letty and, and is in able six. to catch in six. <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll give you one one crazy act. I'll give you two. But you, you get to the point where every other scene or something where you're like, oh, what? Uh, I, I just can't buy it. You know, we have this missile shooting droid going around and we don't see a uh, military uh, chopper in, in sight. I, I just, ha I was having hard things to follow. Granted, the movie taking itself to that ridiculous level also says, you know, we're not trying to take ourselves too seriously. However, it was even still hard for me to kind of get a hold of this movie and take it. You know, from your point of view of everything you're saying, I'm not even going to disagree, but I am going to say 99% of everyone who watches Fast and Furious wants that. You know, Absolutely. They, 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 and <clears throat> I like it because they're not even trying to be realistic. They're not trying to say that they're, they left the realism after, uh, I think right in Tokyo Drift is where all realism like went away. Yeah, but this is a whole lot of <coughs> it, it is, it no is. doubt. No doubt. And then, if I were to say criticism, though, the, the drone uh, whole scene is unnecessary yeah. to me. You didn't even, I don't even think you needed the, <laughs> yeah, the drones. Yeah, it at all. You didn't even need the drones, but, man, bro. What did you think about Vin Diesel? Uh, see, he, I, I think he's, the, he's <coughs> couldn't be any better as Dom. That's, that's the character to me. You know, so you're comparing, and I understand everything you're saying, too, though, because you're comparing it as... You're just, I understand what Chasing's saying, but if you're like me, you're not, you're watching Vin Diesel to do exactly what he did. You're watching Tyrese to do exactly what he did. You're watching that film to be everything that it was to me. Yeah, but see, at the same time, <coughs> I don't have problems with what Therese Gibson said. I don't have problems with how anyone else in the movie acted, but it's just Vin Diesel's delivery. And I think his ability as an actor is starting to get less and less effortful and just honestly just likes to blurt out these sometimes poetic or very cheesy bad action lines. And, and he's kind of turning into like a Sylvester Stallone type character where he has a distinct voice and he just likes it's to funny, say actually, a yeah. few things. I, I mean, but everyone else I liked. I mean, I, I don't I don't know about everyone else. Me, I am a huge uh, fan of Tyrese Gibson. I think he's great. He's you know, he's hilarious. funny um, and I don't mind him. And like I said, the emotional. I like Tyrese as an artist too, singer. I, I, don't, I can honestly say maybe I've listened to Tyrese. I'm not sure. I'm not, I like all his. I'm I like all his singles. But um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't a terrible movie. It wasn't the worst film I've seen this year by any means. It's, but it, you know, again, this movie wasn't anything that I will not come to <coughs> except for that ending. I thought that ending was very, very nice. You could honestly tell that there was some realism in that scene when they're sitting on the beach and you're kind of, there was probably a lot of communication just kind of saying saying what you want to say to Paul or about Paul, talk about Paul, not Brian O'Connor. Yes. And um, I definitely felt that, but to me, uh, that, you know, to get, to, again, two hours and 28 minutes to get to those two minutes is is uh, quite a headache. I think my favorite part of that last beach scene, though, of what we're talking about, and when the, the camera's only on Ludacris and the camera's only on uh, Tyrese, and then um, as they're looking at it, and then, like, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I just felt so, like, I don't know, because it's like those are his real friends. Like, yeah. they, like you said, they're not, they weren't sending off Brian O'Connor, yeah. they were sending off Paul Walker, and then, um, you know, he's holding his baby with Jordana. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I, 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 will, the, I will say, though, that I appreciate the fact that they did kind of really openly say that. This is where the this is that's where the movie ended, and this is kind of us. And I appreciate that because you know even though they did up, end up racing and stuff, you never felt for in a minute that you were still watching Fast and the Furious. You were watching these actors kind of really say what they wanted to say and working these movies with them. And I appreciate that rather than just trying to to get the emotion to help push the movie. You know this movie never really took that cheap shot, <clears throat> no. and 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 tried to just use that emotion for for its own gain. In the market, they never did that. No, they, they didn't. Never. You know, they didn't. And, and you know, and the one thing I was expecting was this major um, introduction for Paul in this film. You and know, I was, I was and it wasn't. It was just as if you would any other Furious movie. So I really respect Juan for being uh, really respectful for that character and treating him as he would have <clears> in any sort <throat> of words. So I think that was really greatly executed. Um, but and the, ending, the studio heads at Universal. But the know. ending was what really kind of made this movie whole. Now, um, there has been talks. I, I, I'm not sure if they've confirmed 8, 9, and 10. 100%. I believe they confirmed, yeah. So, um, well, honest, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's not. Oh. And from the Universal, yeah, yeah. It, it's not officially Greenland. I don't even think they will, honestly, for a, like a month or, or a month or two. Or as soon as this thing's out of the theater, maybe, is when I think they're going to say, oh, you know what? So We're going to move on to the story. But... It also, the the movie is bigger than the character. Yeah. You know, so outside of that, I saw because I know some people are gonna say. Wait, oh, wait, you're you're saying that Furious <coughs> will go on without Paul? Yes, I yeah. think uh, people who say that, uh, people who are going to say that this is out of greed, Vin Diesel's wrong for even wanting to do another one. You should just end the whole series. That is stupid. Um, to me, that's. Stupid. I, I think for that purpose, it is kind of stupid. But at the same time, to me, I think the story with all of them is over. I think this is where you let these these characters end, and I would say explore really, you know, take a spin off, go with other characters. But I mean, I've seen Vin Diesel do the same thing. I've seen these characters do the same thing, and I get that they're family. But how many times do I have to sit at a barbecue or a beach with them and say they're family? I, I mean, honestly, I would think for eight, nine, ten, the best thing we do is to shift all focus maybe towards Rocket State, but because the the, the scene before the um, beautiful send off to. to um, Paul Walker, that was the scene that got me the most, was when he just laughed at me, put, um, well, I won't say whatever, but that scene between them two, I want to see them go at it. I'm, I'm kind of really done with the whole Vindy's thing. I might, be, I might be solo in that. I might be solo in thinking that they should kind of go with a different group or, or explore different characters rather than just focus on them as we've seen them so often. But at the same time, I think that'd be really good for the franchise because it wouldn't be, you know, the same thing. I have no problems with everything you actually said. <clears throat> uh, other than just having the, uh, the old cast uh, just doing cameos. But yeah. to do oh, a Hobbs-centric yeah. film and a Jason Statham with... I don't think Vin Diesel will go anywhere. I think Vin Diesel will always still be there. But having everyone else doing cameos and stuff like that. I love how they had Hector, uh, Pat La Peria. I love how they had Hector out of nowhere. And, and, you know, and that's fun. You know, it that is fun. fun. And like the Vin Diesel, <coughs> you know, cameo at the end of three, that works. Love You it. know, and it, and, it, and it does help enhance the movie. But I just feel like now it's... How do you, when we get to 10, or whatever number they do want to stop on, as big as this franchise will be, it is probably the biggest franchise, at least of our time. Uh, it, it's definitely going to surpass Saw, which I think ended on 7 or 8. Either way, it's going to surpass it. But how do you end better, how do you end for these characters better than that story? You don't. So you might as well, I think, just end it and let it be, and then tell someone else's story. Have them, like you said, come in, come out, that's fine. But honestly, I think that chapter on that family is closed. And I, think and I agree. Show, yeah. And I agree. And Jordan and Bruce, Bruce, oh my god, I love that girl. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was, 
if you've seen any Fast and Furious film and you've liked any Fast and Furious movie, there's no reason why you probably won't enjoy this movie. There's not one Fast and Furious I don't like. Seriously. It, I will I will say, you know, for being two and a half hours, it didn't drag very much. But I thought it just was going and going. <laughs> I mean, there are some fun moments. I mean, I did laugh a few times, but at the same time, I was scratching my head just as equally as that. But anyway, I think Chase people Chase the cinema.com slash Furious 7. That way you can get the full-on review by my man. Description box. Louis Vuitton. Facebook and Twitter. <coughs> Louis Vuitton's right, right in the review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> There's allergies, man. I feel you. Allergies are killing me. I'm taking all my meds, though. And real quick, also, seven days from today, we're going to be watching what? There's, the next big one is Age of Ultron. Yeah, honestly, like I was going to say, <laughs> April is pretty uh, much a very slow month. Um, the one movie I'm actually kind of excited to see, and a lot of people are going to be shocked, is the new horror film Unfriended, which probably won't be very well. Right now it's at an eight, too. Uh, Paul Blart, I know, comes out this month. Uh, I think, like, literally... That's in Las week, Vegas at the wind. Yeah, the last week before Avengers, there's actually pretty much nothing super big. But uh, I would just say... Um, Get your hats on, get ready for Avengers. You know what I'm happy about that, though? Why? It's so the domestic box office, Fear 7, can collect that money. Yeah. I really am. So what do you think we'll do better at, towards, at, at the end of it all? Do you think Avengers will still blow Fear 7 out of the water? Oh my god, yeah, that's not even a comparison. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even, I don't have any doubt that, um... I mean, I don't doubt that Fury 7 is going to do uh, I think Fury 115. Will, I think Fury 7 will do some really impressive things. I don't doubt they're going to do 115 million, but Age of Ultron is going to, we're talking 190, 200 million dollar for opening weekend. There's not even, that's not even a comparison. But see, you know what, also, it was very strategic for Fury 7 because I know we're yeah, going to go real long. They have a whole month of domination. No one's going to not go see this movie. Money. Where I, at the time I had, I don't know what's coming out, it's coming out in May. But I'm sure there'll be something else that there'll, there'll be some a few more exciting films coming out to compete with the Avengers. But other than that, you know, Fury Seven is going to be the movie people are talking about for the next four weeks. I, and I love it. And I love how Universal gave a million dollars to Paul Walker's charity. Just throwing nice. that out there. I didn't know that. Nice. And they did. And I love that. Uh, Paul Walker. Yeah. I mean, it was. I think it was a beautiful way to to really kind of show your respect to somebody. And like I said, I honestly hope that this is where they kind of close the book on that family. But we'll see. I'm sure this isn't the last time. Chase the Cinemas, the film lovers. Website. Website. And rest in peace, <laughs> Mr. Walker.